All right, uh, we are live on Facebook and uh, YouTube now. Uh, so let us uh, begin our bi-weekly uh, sutra discussion. A very good evening uh, to all of uh, our colleague monks uh, and nuns. <laughs> we have two nuns. Uh, maybe a few more uh, nuns will be joining us later. Uh, so. Uh, let us begin the session by paying respect and homage to the Buddha by reciting Namo Tassa three times together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa I pay my respect and homage uh, to him, the blessed one, the worthy one, the fully enlightened Buddha. Uh, <clears throat> dear venerable uh, colleagues, the monks and nuns, uh, I would like to welcome all of you to our bi-weekly sutra discussion. And also I would like to uh, welcome our friends who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube live at this moment, who are joining us from different regions of the world. Um, I would like to introduce our uh, venerable monks and nuns. And it's, it's a great joy to have the presence of many monks and nuns today. Actually, two weeks ago, we had the discussion on the Valentine. We had only, we did not have that many Valentine monks and nuns. <laughs> Just, just uh, four, four months. <laughs> so it's a great joy to have all of you. So let me, uh, I think we all know who we are, but I would like to introduce you to our friends who are joining us, uh, for watching us from different regions. So let me begin with uh, Venerable Vadigal Samitaratana. Uh, he's joining us uh, from England, uh, it's midnight for you. So I'm very happy to have your presence. And we have uh, uh, Venerable uh, Dhammadina, and also the Venerable colleague, I think, uh, as, uh, Sati. Satima, Samaneri Satima. Samaneri Satima. Both of you are joining us from Washington, DC, Virginia. Virginia. And we have Bante Varapanyo. Uh, actually, you're a traveling monk. I don't, I, mean, I don't know where you're joining us. Maybe from Europe? Italy. Italy. Yeah, it's the midnight. And we have Bante Nalaka joining us from Arizona. Uh, then we have Bante uh, Madhavala Saranapala. I have two Saranapalas, my and his. He's joining us from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And we have Bhante Sanata Vihari uh, joining us from uh, Los Angeles, uh, Hollywood monk. <laughs> and then we have Bhante Jinananda joining us from uh, Ottawa, Canada, the capital city of Canada. Then we have Bhante Kusala joining us uh, from here at our temple in Toronto, Mississauga. Then we have Bhante uh, Shanta Sobana. Uh, joining us from California, he is another Hollywood monk. And uh, we have Bhante Kamalasuri joining us uh, from uh, Minnesota, USA. Then we have Bhante Nanda joining us from Rhode Island, USA. And we have Bhante Sankicha. I think you're in the car, <laughs> maybe on your mission, but it's good. happy to have you joining us from Detroit, Michigan, USA. 
Then we have uh, Sister uh, Kema uh, joining us from uh, India. You were in USA last week, but you are back in, in, in India, I guess. Then we have Bante Nandaloka joining us from Ottawa, Canada. And then we have uh, Bante Samadigama. His camera is not working, I guess. Then we have uh, Venerable Trudeau joining us from uh, Florida. So this is such a, a great unity uh, that we have, we monks and nuns have. Uh, we are discussing Dhamma together and uh, uh, as Buddha says, Sukha Sangha Samagi, the unity among the monks and nuns, the monastics, is a great happiness. Uh, so, we also have people uh, watching us from uh, different cities, uh, different countries. We would like to welcome all of them uh, to our biweekly sutra discussion. And uh, I have a kind request from everyone. If possible, uh, please uh, share uh, this program on your social media timelines for the greater benefit of your friends and colleagues. And uh, there are people who are seeking wisdom, uh, uh, you know, the light, uh, and maybe our discussion uh, is going to shed so much light to those who are seeking, maybe those who are going through difficulties, uh, it, this discussion will give them hope. And uh, that's why I kindly ask everyone to um, uh, share this uh, program. Uh, so today's discussion uh, is about uh, war and peace, a Buddhist perspective. And of course, I have to remind everyone, uh, this is not a, a political platform. <laughs> We are not here to talk about politics or, or, or conflicts. We are not here to fight with one another. Uh, together, we are here to uh, explore the teachings of the Buddha. Uh, we, uh, what uh, Buddhism or Buddha uh, uh, has to uh, say about war and peace. And uh, uh, we are uh, here to um, you know, share the positive message. Maybe, you know, uh, I think the positivity is what we all need at this uh, moment. And uh, I'm, I know all of you are very well versed in Dhamma. And uh, if I miss uh, some teachings uh, from the Sutra Pitakas, maybe you could uh, talk about that. You can openly share a positive message based on a, on a sutra or Jataka story where we can see the light. So uh, having said that, now uh, let me uh, uh, begin today's discussion with uh, Bhante Kusala uh, to tell us a story about, uh, I think, uh, during the time of the Buddha, uh, Buddha's uh, relatives were uh, going to fight, <laughs> and Buddha was able to stop it. Now, how did it happen, Bhante Kusala? Thank you, Bhante. Um, this is very timely discussion, and I'm so glad uh, many monks, are, monks and nuns are interested in uh, talking about war and peace uh, uh, at this time, uh, as we get so much information from uh, different sources about what is going on uh, in the world. <clears throat> so this uh, story is famously uh, known by many, many Buddhists. Uh, it is the conflict uh, that happened in, you know, involving the Rohini River. Um, and Buddha's relatives were on one side, uh, Shakyans were on, on one side of the Rohini River, and Kolians were on the other side of the Rohini River. So they shared the water from this river and they did not have any conflict until uh, this uh, one time when there was less rain, uh, Shakyans and Kolians were still uh, doing their agricultural farming using this water from the Rohini River. 
But at this one time, they realized that uh, there was not enough water uh, for both sides to share uh, because there was no rain. And uh, Koalians went to Shakyans and said, you know, we are only uh, one season, you know, we only need water for one time and our crops will ripe and we will we will uh, we will use the water this time and shakyans did not like this idea they said no 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 we also need water mm -hmm. uh, we will also need to cultivate our paddy field and we will we will you know build a dam and get all this water to our side mm -hmm. uh, and shakyans said if we if we allow koalians to use this water we will have to use our jewelries and uh, uh, valuables to buy food from the Koalians. So they started arguing who to use water and these arguments, these arguments heated up. And as a result, uh, one man from the Koalian side who was super angry uh, attacked another person uh, on the Sharkin side. And when they started uh, using abusive language as a result of these fights, um, the conflict, you know, kind of started raging into a, a fight between two clans. Mm. Uh, and it was less about water this time, more about who has more power and who is weaker, who looks ugly, so they forgot all about water and they started picking on names and uh, telling things to hurt the other side. So this went to the ministers and ministers reported this to the rulers, the kings of both sides. And the kings then declared war, not really uh, resolving the water conflict, uh, but they, they declared war. Uh, between the Koalians and Shakyans. And at this point, as, you know, as a habit, the Buddha was uh, scanning the world, observing the world with his psychic abilities to see who needed his help. And the Buddha saw that Shakyans and Koalians were going to start a war and there will be so much blood, bloodshed and lives will be lost. Mm. And when the Buddha learned this, he decided to uh, kind of levitate into the air and went to the pad, you know, to the battlefield where they were preparing for the war. And he stood in air and he started talking to the chief uh, chieftains of these, you know, both Kolian and Shakyan side. So um, uh, although the Buddha knew what was happening, he started asking questions. You know, what is going on here? And they told the story to the Buddha. And then they, the Buddha asked, you know, who's, you know, what is important here? Uh, what has the most value? A bit of water or human lives? Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, uh, hum, uh, human lives is priceless. Water may not be that important as compared to lives of humans. Mm -hmm. and, and then the Buddha said, you know, if you start a war right now, instead of getting water, you will get blood flowing through the river because you never know how to stop this kind of a war and you, none of, you know, neither party will win. Therefore, the Buddha said, just let go of this hatred, uh, delusory mind state and overcome it and make peace. So Shakyans and Kolians, Shakyans especially put their weapons down immediately after seeing the Buddha. And Kolians also listened to the Buddha and, and they stopped the war. They decided that it is, it's, there's no winning to both parties. And this, you know, even the ministers, when they questioned, they didn't know how it actually started. So ministers questioned from their subordinate ones and then subordinate ones questioned from the villagers and villagers pointed to those two people who started attacking each other first. And, and then, um, you know, the question came, why even that, uh, that fight started? And then they, 
the the answer was that the water was the reason so sometimes you don't even know where these uh, conflicts start until it becomes a huge war and a lot of hatred uh, instilled among these fighters so the buddha here uttered through uh, three uh, verses and these are recorded in dhammapada Mm. as verse 197 198 and 199 in which the buddha says susukam mata jivam verine su averino verine su viharam averino and then the buddha said susukam mata jivam ature su anatura ature su manusse su viharam anatura then the Buddha said, Susukam vata jivam usukesu anusuka usukesu manusesu viharama anatura. And I will tell the meanings of these three verses. The Buddha said, Indeed, we live happily, not hating anyone among those who hate. Because there are so many people who would choose hate because that mm. is the easy answer. Yeah. And we, will, we live uh, without hating anyone. And that is the, the case of the Buddha. He had eradicated hate and he did not find it useful to hate anyone. Mm -hmm. And then the Buddha said, you know, in, we, we live happily in good health among those who are ailing. And uh, we, you know, there are so many men uh, who choose a mental violence. And as a result, they live a sick life. The Buddha said, we live happily without having even that kind of ailment. And we live happily not striving for sensual pleasures. You know, we usuke sumanu says, we strive for sensual pleasures. Among those who strive for them, we live without that kind of striving. So, so liberated. Mm. And uh, so these verses, you know, were uttered to Shakyans and Kolians. They understood the value of human lives and they understood the danger of going into war and how much, you know, causalities, how many lives will be lost. And, uh, and the Buddha managed successfully to stop this war. Mm. Um, so this is that story, Bhante. I think we can uh, go from there to find many other sources where uh, Buddhism discusses about war and uh, conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Bhante Gosana. You have beautifully uh, told the story and, and the teachings uh, uh, given uh, by the Buddha. I think those uh, uh, three uh, verses are very important. One is hi uh, highlighting the hate, anger, and how to live uh, happily among the people who are hating, and also uh, how to live uh, with the mental health uh, among the people who are sick, who are uh, not, uh, unhealthy, and also uh, and and the, uh, the usuk, usuka, the passion, the lust, the sensual pleasure. So I think uh, these uh, uh, three words: the vera, atura, usuka, hate, uh, sickness. And the passion of sensual pleasure. This could uh, trigger uh, the conflicts among us, uh, among the human beings. And uh, uh, I think you know uh, our venerable monks and nuns. Of course, you, as you listen to this story, there are so so many things maybe popping up in your head. And there's no order in this. If you would like to ex express your views or share a positive message, I would like to raise your hand. Uh, meantime, let me just uh, bring your attention to some uh, sutras where Buddha uh, actually talked about the, the disaster of a, of a war or conflict. Uh, and in one sutra, uh, Buddha says, uh, men take up swords and shields, buckle on bows and quivers, and charge into battle where they are wounded by arrows and spears and their heads are cut off by sword, and they are splashed with boiling liquids and crushed under heavy weights. This is a, a, a sutra from the Majjhima Nikaya, uh, sutra number 13. And, uh, and another sutra, Buddha 
uh, talks about the battlefields, uh, how it is marked by clouds of dust, the crests of the standards, uh, the clamor and the blows. This is a Majunika uh, uh, in the section five, Panchakanipata Sutta number 75. And uh, uh, there's another sutra which says rulers obsessed, obsessed by lust for power, executed their rivals, imprisoned them, confiscated their property and condemned them. So this is uh, condemned them to exile. Uh, this is a sutra from the Anguttara Nikaya, Tikanipata, Sutta number 69. So obviously Buddha knew uh, any conflict, any war uh, could be a big disaster. And, uh, uh, and therefore Buddha has taken um, a, a different uh, a part and he kind of encouraged rulers and the people not to rage a war, not to engage in any warfare. And he talked about the harmlessness, the in the non-violence, love for all beings. And there is a sutra in the, um, uh, in the Dhammapada, with, uh, the Agatha in the Dhammapada, which says that all beings fear violence, all fear death. Using oneself as a criterion, one should not kill or cause death. And, uh, and then uh, there is a teaching on the uh, Samma Sankapa of the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, we have to uh, let go of the, um, uh, the wrong intention of violence, killing, hurts, uh, and, the, and the hate and anger. And we should try to uh, cultivate the intention, the right intention of nonviolence, non hurt. Uh, and of course, the love and compassion. So I think there are so many teachings uh, we find in the in the in the in the sutras. So uh, uh, I would like to ask a question. So how can Buddhism help uh, this kind of conflict we see in the world? Anyone? Uh, yeah, Venerable Shanta Sobana from California. Yes, uh, thank you very much and for all the wonderful months. Actually, when it comes to the Buddha's message, I want to bring up that before we go into sutras, the most important thing is that what the Buddha said, the uh -huh. value, value of human life, without understanding that, we cannot get into any other solutions. Uh -huh. That is the best. Because when it comes to the war, it has so much gravity, it can destroy everything. Mm. So, it, so in the bottom line, that what the Buddha said, that to become a human being, in the samsaric journey, we, have, we sacrifice a lot. So, and at the same time, that through that message, if we understand that to become this human being, that kicho manusa patilabu, kicha machana jivita. So it, it is very rare to gain human life. And at the same time, when it comes to the Buddhist biology, that we all are kind of like a family. You know, mm. when we, we look at the, the very reason uh, of a society, people talk about the uh, kind of like uh, Muslim brotherhood and mm -hmm. Black Lives mm. Matters. But when it comes to the Buddha's life, you know, that, that kind of concept gave a, you know, huge uh, impact to the society. But when it comes to the Buddha's, you know, teaching, we mm -hmm. all are in a kind of like a family. There was no one that uh, separate from us. As example, that whatever we inhale, because our, our breath is the very primary source of the, the, the life. But when we inhale, that inhalation is someone else's exhalation. There is mm -hmm. no separation. You know, mm. so if if we if we give that teachings to the world, I think that the world is going to be more better. But when it comes to our our own life, sometimes you know, uh, we we don't understand it. We don't go in that way. We when uh, when everything go 
nice and correct and most of people invest the money invest the life invest the society to buy arms mm. and uh, so as example most of countries recently we had a discussion most of countries and they spend so much money to buy weapons mm. more than the, the funding for the education you know but when the war start everybody go against mm. but the thing when everything go in a nice smooth way and at that time if we address to the world to mention the how valuable this human life mm. so that value will bring us as example that when it come to the the eight pole path right effort mm. you know, so why we have to have the right effort because through this sansaric journey maybe we accumulate a lot of unnecessary uh, skills mm. so then so we have to purify ourselves and at the same time how we can purify becoming better ourselves and giving a good opportunities for other people and sharing our life with others so but the most fundamental thing is when it come to this kind of or any other thing <laughs> around that uh, the most important thing i think the foundation is the value of human life mm. if anybody don't understand that i think no any other way that we can apply the buddha's teaching uh that's that's a great uh, sir, uh, sir. Yeah. yeah that's a great idea great, in yeah, a great thought uh, thank you so much uh, venerable shanta sobana for saying that uh, every life matters <laughs> <laughs> right every Best life way. matters uh, i think that is the very reason why um uh, the uh in the, the first uh, suit uh, the first precept the sikha pada panati pata veramani right the uh, sikha padam samadhi so we, this is a training principle we have to train our mind to uh, refrain from take a life because every life is so precious is valuable and uh, so um, uh, that is the very reason why even buddha said i guess sabbe satta bhavantu sukitatta that's we right all sentient beings be happy right yeah yeah so um uh, anyone else who would like to add more insight into this uh yeah bante jinananda from ottawa canada thank you bante for <clears throat> for this nice topic when we comes to define the topic i think uh, we can see that there are many wars going on mm -hmm. uh, in individual level and also social level and also national and international levels mm. so not only the uh, warfare that we uh, uh, that we engage with uh, killing each other there are other wars like trade war and uh, cyber attack and many other wars are in the platform to discuss um the underlying tendency behind all kinds of war is according to kalaha yuva the sutta and many other suttas is the desire the greed hatred and ignorance so when we comes to the topic from the buddhist perspectives as uh, other speakers uh, already talked we need to understand uh, what exactly this mean to us and everybody else around us mm. uh, uh, seeing the value of human life and at the same time how we can battle ourselves within mm. to defeat the enemy within us would be the key uh, process for us to begin uh, to end the war actually if you look at the history of buddhism and also history of the world warfare is happening was happening all the time it has been one of the trends in human existence and if you look at the animal kingdom and even divine world mm. they battle for securing something mm. this is where we actually uh, should find the solace from buddha's teaching that what he says is this life is only for a short period of time mm. and uh, we ignorantly think that it is uh, it is a permanent state but uh, we look at ourselves and around the world with the light of wisdom 
it is pretty uh, simple to understand that this life is short and temporary. And this is where we begin understanding the solutions, Buddha solutions for warfare or any other conflict. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if we feed our listeners with the Buddhist perspective on war and peace, the first thing we need to uh, let them know that we should be uh, living on based, we should be living based on compassion. Actually, the religion or the spirituality that we should take in 21st century is compassion and kindness. Mm. So if we have compassion and kindness, which means uh, sympathetic uh, view about others, I think we can solve many problems. So how do we start? Just look at uh, our mind because within us, we are in a warfare all the time. When mm. you wake up to the day, there are wars going on in us. Uh, what exactly um, happen uh, when it comes to warfare between two nations or many nations, that same anger, ill will, jealousy, uh, mm. and frustration, distress, uh, you know, suffering come into uh, play as a group, as a nation, and so forth. So I think uh, the beginning of the uh, solutions should start from within mm. and find uh, the value of human life, as Bhante Sobhara said, and at the same time, thinking about the shortness of uh, uh, life. And at the same time, if I love myself, definitely I will have a chance to uh, see other people with the same uh, length. I think uh, uh, that is the uh, that is some of the fundamental qualities uh, uh, to understand if we want to stop warfare uh, in international, national, and social level. Uh, mm -hmm. And if we want to develop yourself, it is the same place we need to start. So, as a matter of uh, defining the warfare, I think it, it it is a individual thing, and it becomes a social thing later on, and it it flows into national and international level. So uh, same way the fees is going on. Thank mm. you. So, uh, you know, Bhante Jinanda, thank you for highlighting that. We already have an uh, inner battle. <laughs> the, we have to solve that first. I think until we solve this battle within, uh, we are going to um, uh, throw, it, it, this is what happens. You know, we are not happy and we are already fighting within. And we don't. We we are getting angry, and uh, then we throw that uh, this uh, this battle to the out to the people around us. And uh, so, so solving our own problem is very important. I think this is what uh, uh, we, we see the Buddhism is highlighting, right? So Bhante Samitaratna from England. Uh, what's your take on this? Yes, thank you very much, Bhante, Guruan Saranai, most honorable Mahasangha. So today I am so much delighted to add in and add my own philosophical thoughts regarding war and peace as a Buddhist viewpoint. Uh, first, I think I feel there are plenty of Buddhistic thoughts and views coming through very, very successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, in my view, I suppose that there is a real, real problematic issue or real difficulty ruling a territory or particular region or kingdom in terms of Buddhism. Because the Lord Buddha has said, Sanyukta Nikaya, Rajya Sutta, Sakanuku Bhante Rajyan Karetung, Ahanang Ahapayang, Ajinang Ajhapayang, Ghatayang Aghatapayang. So it is tremendously difficult to roll out a country without any sorrow, sufferings, and tears. So mm -hmm. this is a very, very tough and very rare task. So, but I think presumably it can make it happen. It's possible. So I am just going to underpin four facts to reasons from Theravada Buddhism and Rest of two reasons for Mahayana Buddhism. The first fact from Theravada Buddhism, the Lord Buddha has said, the Dhammapada uh, Chitta Vagga, mm. it's kind of authority of human mind. 
चित्ते न नियति लोको चित्ते न परिकसति चित्तसे कदम्मस सब्बे वसमन्मुगु in very brief to put it another way i can say the fundamental root of either war or peace is human mind or mm. consciousness so if we are able to regulate ourselves our thoughts feelings and emotions we can get rid of human war on the planet mm. if you if you want to establish human peace along with human well-being we should improve we, that means we should improve the seeds of compassion and many spiritual thoughts then root of all these matters are always with us then first and foremost we have to understand it the self regulation and yeah we can hear you uh, sorry but okay Yes, uh, self yes, self regulation and self understanding. The second matter I got it as compassion and empathetic joy. The Lord Buddha has said there are a couple of spiritual thoughts which are immeasurable and incalculable, which we call karuna and mudita, so bana chaita sika, appamanya chaita sika. Then. If you are able to cultivate human compassion and empathetic joy towards the all around the world, it is indeed possible to neglect the human woe and build up the human peace and harmony at the same time. Absolutely, it is possible. So compassion and empathetic joy are the another roots or another fundamental reasons for building mm -hmm. up the human society. Then, apart from that, particularly, the Confucius has said the concept of run. The concept of run means self-heartedness. Mm. So, indeed, the self-hearted self-heartedness is the highest humanistic value and the ultimate goal as a human being. First, if you want to love or being compassionate to the world, you have to love yourself. Mm. then if you can love yourself if you can love or make your compassion towards your relatives and your friends then it is very similar to others as well you love yourself you love your parents and relatives and your country people other people are also same then we have to understand in favor of self-heartedness mm. then finally the la Uzu, who was a great philosophical master in China, he said, we, 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 we all have kind of very universal rhythm in human life. Then peace with human life is a symbol of softness, flexibility, and relaxation. Then conversely, the death with woe is a symbol of rigidity, inflexibility, violence. Mm -hmm. So all in all, I wanted to say that Buddhism in favor of Mahayana, Theravada, Vajrayana, Tantra, and in any way, the Buddhism recommends profound teachings to human well-being alongside mm. democracy, free will, freedom, and well-being. So there are no room for war or violence, any non-humanistic deeds. Mm. Thank you so much, Venerable Samit Ratana, for uh, shedding more light on uh, and adding more wisdom into today's discussion and uh, war and peace. And of course, you're absolutely right. You know, it's, uh, uh, the war begins with the mind, and we there, therefore we need to train the mind. We have to um, uh, practice compassion, sympathetic joy, and also as you brought the Confucius and Lao's uh, Lao teachings about the self-heartedness, uh, self-warm-heartedness. I think this is what we are lacking. That's why the human mind is becoming so cold. <laughs> so cold-heartedness is going to cause more problems, right? So we need the warm-heartedness. So uh, thank you. And Bhante Kamalasri from Minnesota raised his hand. And I'm pretty sure Bhante, you have very deep insights to share with us. Bhante Kamalasri. Uh, you had to unmute yourself, Bhante. Yeah. 
dear venerables the actually i wanted to talk something about this uh, i think we have to think in a little bit different way about this topic today aha uh-huh. aha uh-huh. because the we can find so many so many concepts from the a textbook uh-huh. uh so so many so many we can find if we uh-huh. have the interfaith conference uh, or discussion like this the other people also can say the so many things from their textbook and uh-huh. everybody can say we are the best yeah. people <laughs> who talk about this yeah the but trouble is different because in history the what we have done practically uh-huh. uh, for the fees uh, the, i have complained against the religious group or the all of the religious group not uh, the include in buddhism also the, because of the uh, it is sometime i think it is same because the world peace council it is organized by the philosophers and atheist people not the religious people ah <laughs> <laughs> that is the important thing <laughs> they all of the <laughs> it is not came from the religious uh, organization or uh, it, it it was not the religious concepts ah yeah the uh, karl jung uh, uh, the uh, i forget the the famous philosophers who was in tw- last century uh-huh uh, the other people uh, proposed this concept and organized that for the uh, united nation and uh, the peace, uh, peace conference in the united nation and peace council mm. then we have to think about this and that what we what we can what we can do for this mm. the, as religious group yeah mm. the the uh, now the i can see uh, this is very important thing in rattapala sutta uh, it says something new thing we have to think about the uh, war and peace uh, because it, uh, that uh, concept in ratna rattapala sutta say for the reason for the a war is lack of resource ah dissatisfaction uh, dissatisfaction yeah. the resources are lack mm yeah then human mind it is dissatisfaction mm. uno loco atitto yeah then after that say being slave to the desire mm that that is because because of the, the, the most of the the anger base there is no any war in the world uh just the our innocent anger i like to say it is innocent anger mm. <laughs> it is yeah. normal normal thing in human life it is it is um, not big thing they are they, they have private troubles they have they have their hurt hurted mind and unhappy mind that that is only thing happen with that mm. but this is economical trouble this trouble of the resource yeah. always make war yeah just mm. only if we talk in a, if we talk about just anger um, it is not the reason yeah mm. Ad- otherwise now we, we also have to think the, the, this thing the as example our the, our mind our mentality our mindset how work it the same thing happened before two years ago the russia attack to the uh, syria mm-hmm. iss i think we were silence mm. <laughs> We, we we were silence we didn't talk anything about mm. because of the within our mind practically we also agree with the russia uh. <laughs> we have another mindset so we didn't talk about that but now we talking about that why why is it that mm. hmm? um, 
the because sometime we are because of we living in USA. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes the Asian people who live in uh, the, our Buddhist countries, mostly I talked to some people the last two days they, mm-hmm. to try to understand their mentality about this situation in the world. Anybody not understand what is the result? What will happen in future? Uh, what is going on? Mm. Uh, how will yeah. this affect to the life in the other part of the world also? Uh, they just only watching the videos like a video watching video games. Mm. Yeah, that is the only thing happening in but even though Asian country most of the biggest population Buddhist population in Asia, the Buddhist countries also happening in that is thing. Then first of all, we have to understand why, why, why do we weak like this way in this to, important topic? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that is the thing. We are very weak. Yeah, otherwise mostly there's religious group. We, we also uh, cause uh, uh, for the war in the world. Then mm. we, we also have to t- take uh, responsibility as religious group. And otherwise, in the all over the world, the a- atheists, non-religious people, they have done so many things for mm. the peace. Yeah. Then we have to. My purpose is we have to think about what is the our. There, yes, we have so many concepts. How we uh, trans them, or the, how how we make project, yeah? how we pro- how, how we build up them uh, uh, until to project, mm. uh, and how we can activate in the world for mm. the peace. The, yeah, the, the Ukraine and Russian trouble, it is not the one and only. Mm. But it is biggest in we're going to. I don't know. I am very concerned about this situation. So mm. That is why I say it is biggest thing. But it is not only that. In future also, it would be happen in other in a, in a, within another situation. Mm. Yeah, they because of the which uh, within this uh, economical trouble, we don't know in a in a day future. In the Thailand and uh, Thai maybe Thailand and Myanmar. They, they were. They also must be. They start a war like this way, in future mm. because of the the new economic system in the East Asian countries. Mm-hmm. Then we we have to think about that. So I like to propose the how do we create a project, ah. or how do we active. Uh, within this, like this situation mm. in the society, I think uh, as uh, we we all have to become uh, the engaged Buddhists. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I think we do talk about engaged Buddhism. Like you know, when there's a conflict like this, uh, and of course our uh, 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 task should be to help. You know, reduce the tension and those. Uh, who are subject to this uh, conflict, and of course they they, they are suffering. Now, uh, a little while ago, uh, uh, I uh, you know uh, our assistant uh, Dave said uh, he talked to one of his friends, and like you know how they are going around and talking to the refugees. You know we have a place. You know if you want, you can stay with us. You know at least you know we have two rooms for you. Or oh, my friend has one room for you. Contact us. You know you can welcome. I see that kind of compassion is going to uh, uh, diffuse the tension. And I think Bante Kamlasir, what you said was it's very important. Lack of resources and as uh, people always feel incomplete, right? Incomplete. They want more, and uh, people have become slaves to the cravings and, and desires. And uh, so uh, as we understand our own self and our, our own uh, condition, and as we try to transform ourselves, then we also try to help others, right? So it's very important. Uh, so Bhante Kusala, you raised your hand. Uh, I'm pretty sure you have more to add into this. Uh, I really liked <laughs> Uh, that Bhante Kamalasiri mentioned about um, it is not just hate, the cause behind 
wars and fights <clears throat> it is also lack of resources mm -hmm. it is so true you know when uh, at one point you know uh, adana nandane uh, uh, so the Pali, the translation of it when when you don't give wealth to the poor mm. uh, from the government uh, the poverty increases and they start stealing mm. and if you need protection from those who come to rob your house you have to keep a weapon and when you use weapons it hurt people and then as a result of uh, that it can increase into a war a huge conflict so it is very true that you know there are many reasons and among many reasons to start a war among them we find lack of resources is uh, is one one of them and also i see that misunderstandings mm. uh, uh, can be uh, a cause behind uh, these conflicts sometimes people not being able to grasp their limit you know even at one point when monks who were bearers of dhamma dhamma dara and there were monks who were bearers of vinaya those who were very uh, strict on vinaya the discipline of the the code of discipline of monks mm. and there was this uh, kind of conflict because one one of those monks left a bit of water in the toilet uh, so in in the so they used a basket for uh, in the toilet and they left a bit of water there was a rule that uh, you are not there was some argument that you are not supposed to do it and those who monks those monks who were strict on dhamma said no that's that's not such a big deal but vinaya monks said you know it is a big deal and then they started fighting at this point the buddha came and said no just don't fight for fight for something so simple like this this is so trivial mm -hmm. and these monks continued fighting uh, kind of fight not physically but still um, being split because of this kind of misunderstanding mm -hmm. and then even the buddha decided okay if you guys don't stop this i'm going to retreat to the forest and just <clears throat> is my seclusion remain in seclusion and when the buddha went away uh, and people realized you know that if the buddha went uh, these monks were having an argument and the buddha is no more around and people stopped giving food to monks mm. and then monks realized oh we should really stop this you know <laughs> we need food to survive <laughs> and we are huge numbers yeah. uh, so then they they stopped you know you see uh, when you don't receive <laughs> um, food yeah. it can it can stop a huge flight uh, fight so you see lack of resources and not getting what you want uh, and realizing that we have gone too far you know learning how far is too far even in a conflict is very important so uh, i see this is also an example where Uh, in, earlier we discussed about the buddha resolving a conflict and you know retrieving to uh, just not you know the buddha resolving that conflict and here the buddha retrieving to the forest you see the same buddha uh, attempting to establish peace uh, and seeing uh, we can see the details of these incidents and realize that you know these these are the conflicts and these all start because of uh, adhering to certain opinions and you see uh, you recently wrote this little piece uh, you know little piece of a uh, article about war bante sanapal and you shared this beautiful quote that said if a mind can start a war mind mm. can also stop a war mm. so that is super you know super wonderful that we start that it all starts in your mind Mm. I think we can go from there for the remainder of the discussion. Yeah, thank you, uh, Bhante Kusala, for adding more uh, insights into this discussion. Of course, the views always conflict, the perspectives, and uh, we don't. We, lack of understanding could lead to more uh, problems and more conflicts, and even uh, within the uh, the monastic community. You know, they they were the Buddha's disciples, but you know. they were taking the side dhamma daras vinaya daras and they were so stubborn you know they were we are right this no we are right 
So the, I think these two uh, uh, views are based on ego too, right? So uh, the, there's the ego conflict and uh, Buddha himself could not <laughs> help the monks at that moment. So he said, it is better to uh, live in the forest, you know, alone than uh, living with these uh, monks who are, fire, who are in conflict. So anyways, so later on, people stopped uh, uh, helping them, feeding them, then they realized, my goodness, we made a huge mistake. So we, they sought the forgiveness from the Buddha. <laughs> Right, so um, Bhante Jinananda, you uh, raised your hand. You have more to share. Yes, Bhante, uh, it is very nice to hear from Bhante Kamalasiri about uh, some true facts. Yeah. It's indeed that organized religion by its name never solved any problem in uh -huh. the world. Uh -huh. uh, even the Emperor Asoka came into, the, came into Buddhism just by uh -huh. looking at a small monk and uh, at the at the time he was having so many resources to fed up uh, with whatever he had been doing actually uh -huh. and if you look at the history of uh, human uh, existence what he said was right organized religion uh, by that title we cannot come and solve problems that's why uh, actually in the mechanism of war or peace never consider religion can do anything. If you look mm. at the United Nations, none of them invite religious leaders to solve any problems because of this lack of mechanism in religion to provide peace and happiness for the general public. As a group, they would be really good, doing well because they, as he said, they have a golden statement of peace and harmony and I'm not uh, putting Buddhism into a state where it doesn't mean anything. But of course, uh, what the Buddha said is all about uh, compassion, kindness. And there is a practical way, actually. Mm, he mm. brought the point that Paticca uh, Samupa, the dependent arising, should be under understood with regard to conflict, war, and any problem. Of course, yes, if we follow that path. That's why we want to leave that religious label out now and go to people. Actually, he was talking about some method to do in order to make peace. So as uh, ambassadors of peace, Buddhist monks can do this. If, look at the Buddha's life. When he mm. went on Pindapath and if he found that there is no, uh, there are enough time for me to stay somewhere, he went to other monasteries and talked to other religious leaders. He went to places where some problems uh, you know, existed and talk about that. So isn't that a path for us to follow, to go to other religion, to other people and find a way out of these human, uh, problematic human conditions. I think Buddha has given us so much uh, so that we have to act according to it. So uh, when we talk about Buddhism is not a religion in a way, it is a form of philosophy, it is a form of way of living. Uh, especially addressing those human conditions. It's a psychotherapy, somebody define it. So uh, I think uh, as true individuals who follow the Buddha's teaching, we need to put that so-called label behind and follow the path of compassion and kindness as the Buddha said, so that we have opened our mind towards all these uh, different uh, you know, uh, characters so that they would accept us. I think uh, uh, what he said is really true and I am up to that. I mm -hmm. think, uh, uh, so we all need to understand uh, that uh, we can make a, a, a family and a society more peaceful if we understand that co the common religion in the modern world is accepting humane qualities uh, from the bottom of our mind. Uh, and uh, allowing uh, others to enter in. That is called put in. Mm. Okay, <laughs> that's very interesting. So I said the communication is the key, right? Yes. Uh, the communication, the, the peaceful dialogue based on understanding, based on mutual respect, mutual understanding. And this uh, uh, peaceful dialogue and communication uh, uh, ha have the power to 
uh, clarifies so many things, the, the things that we don't see the other side. I think uh, when we engage in conversation like this, let, let's see even what we are doing now. Uh, we all are joining from different cities in North America and Europe, and we are discussing, and there are, actually, I'm very happy to uh, uh, tell all of you, we have so many people watching uh, this program on uh, Facebook and YouTube. I think this is a great interest to the people uh, who are seeking some uh, help. Uh, or they are trying to find some solution. I think today's discussion is going to shed more light. Uh, so Bhante Sankichi, you uh, uh, raised your hand, Bhante Sankichi from Detroit. Uh, what's your take on today's discussion? Yes, Bhante, uh, Sanapal, thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah. Actually, you know, personally, you know, when you look at these heated uh, turbulences uh, that are going on in the world, actually, mm. it just occurred to me, actually, you know, as we all are still facing the global pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Hundreds of thousands of millions of people are dying still. Mm. Mm. And it's amazing to see that have we learned the lesson from mm. what's going on so far, right? Mm, mm. I think, uh, you know, from the Buddhist teachings also, uh, we can find some important messages, lessons, uh, you know, to think about the world, the nature, that, and we should learn lessons, actually. Mm. You know, uh, eventually, I remember in uh, uh, Satya Surya Gavana Sutta, uh, mm. like uh, in this kind of... Uh, occasions, Buddha gives us uh, very interesting information to uh, look at the meaning of our life, you know, how long we are going to be here on this planet, yeah. right? How temporary, how short our life is. So we don't have much time to waste, right? So uh, I think uh, personally, uh, we all have to understand and learn these important lessons from what is going on. Uh, in the world. So the best example is this uh, global pandemic, I think, you know, uh, it has affected almost everybody, every nation. Yeah. But the very uh, unfortunate thing is that, you know, the world, uh, commonly the modern society uh, is taking the war, uh, warfare as actually kind of uh, as a measure of uh, testing or measuring their power uh, the strength, right? Uh, mm. Their political powers, uh, their economical powers, and all these things, you know. So that is where actually I think practically we have to uh, impose these values, you know, especially in the young generations. Mm. You know, that reminds me of uh, one important, uh, interesting saying actually I learned from uh, Bhante Pundaji, actually, I still remember. Mm. You know, this is all about being civilized eventually. Mm. You know, the real civilization begins mm. from the moment you begin to or you start to think about the next person, mm. you know, the person who is sitting next to you, not only about mm. yourself, mm. right? So we can see how many innocent people, even innocent babies, children are dying uh, mm. because of these wars, you know. Mm. Uh, what do they know? you know, they had to uh, go through these unfortunate uh, incidents, right? Mm, mm. And losing their life. So I think as Buddhist monks and uh, our Buddhist communities, I think what we all are doing actually, I think we have to appreciate, you know? Mm, mm. It's not that we are not doing anything, you know? Uh, so maybe we, we, we may not be able to change the, the, the world <laughs> as a mm. whole, you know? So we have to appreciate what we are doing, you know, even if you teach one kid about, as you said, you the, the value of nonviolence, you know, mm. five precepts. Mm. This is how we can change the world. I think yeah. uh, personally, individually, uh, collectively, we have to appreciate actually already what we have been doing. So yeah. I, uh, I the learning, is... learning the lessons, I think, is a very important thing and look at our life you know, mm. uh, with the meaning of uh, the Buddhist teachings as an answer to uh, the warfares. Yeah, so I think uh, you're right. You know, we, we still have this uh, pandemic and it's not gone yet. Uh, people, uh, we suffered for more than two years and uh, people are still struggling to recover from this. And, and then here is another pandemic. 
<laughs> and the more we are adding more problems, more sufferings and pains into this world. And uh, it's so, uh, I, as you said, I think I, I know Bhante Sankhya, Bhante Punaji always uh, uh, talks about that, you know, civilized, you know. Uh, so we are practicing, you know, meditation, dharma to make us civilized because the warfare, so all this, uh, the problems are the result of the uncivilized mind. So thank you exactly. for bringing in that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, now we have uh, 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 Venerable Trudeau uh, from uh, Florida raised his hand. Uh, Venerable Trudeau, what, what's in your mind? Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Uh, salutations to all of the bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think um, we, we Buddhists play a very, uh, we monks, um, members of the Sangha play a very vital role in educating the public, uh, mm. people across the world. And there's a shift in consciousness of change where I believe in the near foreseeable future, hopefully in our lifetime, hopefully uh, our lifetime that we get to see uh, this shift in consciousness uh, right before us. Mm. As in, um, you know, like here in America, we, we have this, uh, the first three words in the constitution, we the people. And there's a tremendous amount of uh, influence that the people have in regards to the choice of leadership in their particular region or country. And I, a lot of people have this fire in their heart to advocate for peace. And I believe that by and through the teachings of the Dhamma and that when they receive the Dhamma and fully see right view, see the three marks of existence, see the four noble truth, and mm -hmm. most uh, notably the first noble truth of Dukkha, then the people, uh, the masses of people, the crowd, the majority will make a better and more informed choice in choosing their leader whoever that may be. Uh, additionally, they will also advocate for peace, like we have seen the many humans, mm -hmm. um, and also citing the late Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh and Dr. MLK, Dr. Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. who collaborated and went be above and beyond the calling of their role and responsibility. Uh, Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh could be described as someone who, um, a Buddhist without borders to advocate for peace. Mm. And it's uh, very disheartening uh, that uh, our leaders, certain leaders and certain people around the world uh, did not see clearly the first noble truth. And had they clear, see clearly the first noble truth, internalized it, um, we would have a less of pain and suffering in the world as a direct res result of that seeing. My students, uh, they talk about, yeah, the first noble truth, I get it. And I said, you, you get it. You get it on an intellectual level, but have you seen suffering for yourself? Have you seen birth, old age, decay, death, disease? Mm. And um, to my right-hand side is a, is a skeleton. Is it okay yeah. if I show it to everyone? I am. <laughs> okay. So when we monks <laughs> teach the, the Dhamma, we tend to want to be very impactful in the way we teach. And pursuant to the Theravada tradition and part of our meditation teachings is a Subha Kamatana, uh, which is death meditation. So Stan here is a, a real skeleton, as I show to the world. Uh, a very rare skeleton to obtain for teachings. I assert uh, the other day on social media that had our leaders have a skeleton in their office, along with, of course, their national flag, you know, this reminds us of our own mortality and the potential mortality rates that we inflict when in a position of leadership. Um, when we look at the first noble truth uh, in details, right? Mm. What, is, uh, what is birth, what is decay, what is death? And looking at the definition of the parting and vanishing of beings, 
out of this or that order of being, their destruction, disappearance, death, the completion of their life period, dissolution of the groups of existence, the discarding of the body. And that we have seen uh, clearly on, uh, on CNN. And, you know, at, towards the end of the Buddha's life, we see that they decimated most of the Sakyan uh, group and tribe. It was mm. very disheartening to read about you know, the life of the Buddha and towards the end, you know, even he couldn't uh, convince all um, to even save as many as he possibly could. And it seems like every 10 years we have a war uh, in observance here in the West. Mm. So with the, um, with the, through the informed lens of the Dhamma about the teachings of karma, rebirth, first noble truth, we take the most potent teachings that the Buddha left us and teaching it to the world and the world is better informed. I believe that we will see that shift in change uh, for the better, hopefully in this lifetime and future lifetimes, uh, generations to come. I'd like to conclude my talk. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, Venerable Trudeau, for adding more into uh, insights into this discussion. You, you're right. You know, this. Uh, if, if you can understand the, the three forms of existence, uh, the Four Noble Truths, uh, uh, this understanding would uh, give us uh, a different outlook and a perspective about the life and the world itself. And this, this is where we can uh, develop the compassion. Uh, for all sentient beings. I know we have two hands raised by two venerable monks, but I saw uh, Sister Kema, actually you will try, you raised your hand several times, but not actually here in the screen. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, I would like you to invite to add your uh, perspective on today's uh, topic. Venerable. Uh, well, I thought, I thought the venerables did a fantastic job of, mm -hmm. of bringing forth the different aspects um, of war and and uh, I want to go back to one war and peace, both the directions, but I want to go back to the Majima Nikaya number 18, the Madhu Pandika Sutta. Can you hear me? Yeah? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that's something that I have given to my children and I teach regularly in my classes as the section on dependent origination is inside of it. And mm. that this shows my, the reason for me using the Madhu Padika Sutta so often is because um, I was a bike rider and long distance biking before I was a nun. And, you know, if you break your bike, if you don't know how it works, mm. you cannot fix it. Mm. And my children used to come to me when they were growing up. And they would say to me, mom, they're having a peace conference. This is great. Look, there's a picture of everybody outside the building. They're going to go and have a peace conference. Mm. And then at the end, they would come out and say, look, they're leaving and have another picture. But we never really had anything the children and the teenagers could grab onto and say, look, they're doing something to change the way this works. So in under my point is that if we could only figure out a way to get some of these teachings you're all talking about into the school systems, into the years that they have health class and they're learning about what they're gonna face in life outside of their major subjects, that this is probably a really good thing to work towards because if we do not know what war is and how precisely it works, we cannot ever go in that building and formulate peace. Now, one of you talked about a really interesting topic, and that was about, uh, um, you know, the food and provisions, uh, the resources, that's always about resources. It's also about a very wicked industry that exists in our country, the MIC. The military industrial complex is what keeps your 10-year cycle going. And the way that it operates, everyone should learn about there is a funding fear cycle that they run on the public to make them afraid of the devil who is the other person in the Cold War. All the Russians had horns, all the women were ugly, we were told, you know, everyone wants to eat us alive, you know. And it was a very, very scary thing for my children growing up. 
And the thing is, we need to deface this. We need to take this away. We need to understand that human beings have to rise above their DNA flaw. And the DNA flaw, if you want to understand what it is, I have told mothers who are distraught with their children getting upset over this war, you need to go to the door of a nursery school and look in the door of the nursery school and mm. watch the children play. And you're going to start to see the flaw. It's mostly in males, but it's in females too, you know, mm. but it's in males tremendously. And this flaw drives them. And the materialism of our society causes a pressure for this to keep going. They've also tricked us. They've tricked us so they can play whatever game they want to play around us because they've digitalized us. And recently, I kind of made a funny realization that if only women had invented communication systems like mobile phones, we wouldn't have any problem. Mm. But I have a problem because if I don't understand my phone and I buy another one, have you ever noticed that you have to learn the whole thing all over again? And that you're overwhelmed. And my favorite thing was when I was in Malaysia, there were some people going through a museum with a Boy Scout troop and a little boy, he stood in front of an exhibit in Sing, it was in um, the Chinatown there of what the old offices used to look like. And the scout leader said, there is a adding machine and there is a typewriter. But the little boy was absolutely glued to wanting to know what was that on the desk, the little thing that is looking so small. Oh, he said, that's a, a telephone. He says, what does it do? He says, you pick it up and you talk to one person at a time and that's all. And no bells and no lights flash and you're not hooked into any advertising and you can complete your call and nobody bothers you. And if you communicate, you're going to communicate from one place, by the way, I have nine ways you can actually communicate with me. I try to turn them off, but most of the time those applications say, if I turn them off, my phone will no longer work. This is crazy world we're putting. But the reason I'm talking to you about digitalization and this kind of confusion, well, the bottom line with the phones is I can't take my cord and give it to you to get energy. A lot of times you're, you use a different cord. This mm. is not nuts. We're separating people in the digital world. We're preoccupying the whole population so they can't look at what is wrong with the bicycle. They have to understand how the bicycle is put together. That's why I take them to two places when I teach. Mm. The Bada Karata Sutta, you've heard me say before, showing, asking them what is true about the past and what is true about the future because the men who run our countries and our world, they don't understand and women, okay, that what does run our world, um, are we really possible? Is it possible for our minds to advance above what's driving war in all directions? Mm. Ukraine was a beautiful country. It's a beautiful country, you know, and, and it has its own GP uh, and everything is really working well that this should happen to it. But people, Buddhism has the answers. And when you go into the into the Madhu Pandika Sutta and go to the one paragraph, there's one paragraph in there. And at the bottom, it says, this is the end of wars and all fighting and all sticks and all rods and all guns and everything. One thing we should mention here when we're talking about all this is the actual power of the Ukrainian people. Yesterday, thousands of them did come out on the streets in spite of an actual war going on. Thousands were in protests. Unfortunately, over 800 of them were you know, arrested, but they came out. They're not hiding and they're coming out and they're, not, they're going to resist as hard as they possibly can. These people are fighting for their survival and for their freedom, but the Buddha can help them we can help them by showing them how this works and how your yeah. mind works and how to yeah, avoid it and share it with as many people the, as possible. Understanding That's the different it. origination is, is the key, right? Understanding different yes. origination and how things unfold and how, how we can, you know... It's forgiveness, yeah, compassion, and somewhere. loving kindness. Yeah. That's it. Com yeah. Forgiveness you, and compassion. And loving yeah, thank you, Sister Kema, for adding. I know we are coming to a conclusion. We don't have much time. 
Um, I, I would like to hear more from you, actually, uh, Sister Kema, but hold on to your thoughts. And uh, uh, Bante Santo Sobana. Uh, and after you, I uh, uh, see Bante Nalaka raised his hand. I would like to hear your uh, point of view, Bante Nalaka. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank Bante you. Santo Sobana. And uh, so I want to give some information for our old listeners. Uh -huh. so how, how, we can, how we can handle this time? According to the Buddha's teaching, and try to have an undisturbed mind. Mm -hmm. Because the war going on somewhere else, and if you disturb at to your home, it's mm -hmm. kind of like your thoughts going to have a kind of like a greed, hatred, and the delusion. It's, it's deeply start to contribute. And other thing is, Today, with these social medias, they what happening. Uh, actually, we can't get the right news. Mm, mm. So, a lot of, lot of fake news go around the world. So, if you if you sometimes, without knowing the, the clear fact, and if you try to share something on your social media, it's kind of like you providing weapons to the war. So, mm. don't do that. You know? So, and try to yourself to get into the right information mm. and at the same time have a compassion in your heart that is what we believe that is we you know we teach with the loving kindness and compassion mm. do it more and more and bring that energy and accelerate that power and that way rather than going through because always the war going, the world going to be a war zone it's always there from the <laughs> big yeah. you know, it's never going to go it's never going to be a pure land it's yeah. always good, but when it comes to us, how we handle ourselves and how we can contribute to others with our thoughts, and mm. it has a great impact. Because when it comes to the Buddha's teaching, the most powerful thing, more than the weapons or the nuclear, it is our human mind. But mm. unfortunately, we neglected that. You know, we neglected that we're looking something else, and if we start to look into that and if we bring that strength and there is no way that this any, the machines or the technology or the weapons can overtake that human mind. Yeah, you know? that's, that's a, there's a deep wisdom in this, you know, I think it's the human mind. We need to learn to fix the mind, right? Yeah, thank you. And Bante Nalaka from Arizona. <laughs> from Arizona, yes. Yes, so can everyone hear me? Oh, lots of things because... Okay. Dear Venerables, you shared a lot of excellent points. Can everyone hear me? Yes, yes, very clear. Okay, good. The Wi-Fi is a little weak, so forgive me if I go out. So to bring it back to the mind, we can understand this from the point of view of sociology or psychology, as the Bonte mentioned. Yes, just invoking anger is insufficient to understand why there are wars, there are proximate and approximate causes. But we can take it back to a Buddha and understand it from the point of view of views. Now, I'm not a psychic, but I'm pretty confident that Vladimir Putin is attached to his views, his grievances against the West. But I, too, have views. So in understanding my mind, which I can make more kind and more compassionate and empathetic, then that is how we change the world. Mm -hmm. I think Bhante Sankicha, that I pronounced his name right, he said, we can't change the world, but we can change our mind slowly, mm -hmm. yet surely over time. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, the world will change. Otherwise, we fall into hopelessness and despair or apathy. And that's not what Buddha taught. So kindness towards ourselves, compassion, and examining our views and not being attached to views, even correct views. For example, democracy. Yes, I believe that is probably not probably the best system we have. But if I beat people over the head with this as a cousin, <laughs> that's violent. <laughs> That's yeah. mental violence. You know? yeah. So I won't force the whole world to be, or to establish a democracy, even though I believe that is the best system we have and we can probably do better than that. If we survive on this planet, and we will survive on this planet if we use the tools we've been given by Buddha and other awakening beings. The Brahma Viharas, start mm. there. Mm. Non-attachment to views, immeasurable, unconditional goodwill, loving kindness, compassion, mm. empathy, and appreciation for what we have. Right now, I have access to food, enough food, and the lodgings that I need as a monk. As a householder or a layperson, someone can 
take note of what they have mm. and be grateful. It's okay to be grateful that you're not in the midst of war right now. Help as you can, offer shelter, as you said, Bante Sada and Apala. Offer a room to a refugee. There's a refugee crisis, another migrant crisis due to war. Mm. So if you have room to spare, you can spare room, you can spare money. You can also spare your mind, widen your mind, expand your mind to include everyone in your mm. thoughts, in your aspirations. May they be well, may they be happy, may they be at peace. Mm. I, I think uh, helping the people, those- And starts uh, with that, people look at. <laughs> uh, I think you're breaking. Um, I think uh, I, we understand, I think helping the people mm. during this difficult time, uh, showing our love and compassion, uh, especially to those uh, people uh, who had to uh, leave uh, their home, you know, the loved mm. ones. And I think if you, if we can you imagine the, um, the, the, the amount of suffering they are going through right now. And I think as Buddhists, we all have a moral and spiritual obligation to be there with them. So I'm trying to actually mm. find uh, some connections, uh, you know, how to send some help in, from here. Uh, so uh, uh, I see we are coming to an end. We just have uh, five more minutes. And uh, uh, I know Bhante Sanata Vihari uh, from Los Angeles, uh, you, you are here. And it, do you have anything to share with, uh, or any positive message uh, with our audience? Uh, Bhante, Bhante, uh, Ayas. Uh, you know, I've, I've personally seen two wars and, and my father, and my uncles. Um, yeah, so war is a constant theme in, in my family. Uh, every generation has been involved in some war, even back to like 120 years. For 120 years, every generation in my family has been war. And uh, what stands out to me the most is I remember my father, I asked him about how he felt you know, about how he felt about everything. And uh, he said he never really like anger or any, any resentment uh, towards the people that he was fighting. He knew that it was happening like really because on another level, the people who were in power kind of like um, putting the people against each other. So he never took anything uh, personal, although lost many of his dear friends, he told me um, some what happened to his friends so you know i try to think about like how the buddha, buddha faced this and i think most of the time i just try to take this one image of the buddha that i remember when when he was trying to protect his uh the sakyans from being in, from the army and he tried his best right and mm. the king got around and he destroyed the sakyans and uh you know they told the buddha you know the sakyans have been destroyed they were massacred and the Buddha just stayed silent, you know? So, and, and I think the Buddha does show us that we can act, right? But we mm. can also act from a way of, I think one of the other bonds has said, like our mind doesn't shake, right? We yeah. don't become perturbed. So I think, yes, we need to become more engaged. But we can, the Buddha, so many examples of the Buddha going out there and doing things and monks too. And even to in our days, you know, Thich Nhat Hanh and so many monks and nuns doing the work, but at the same time, we have to kind of like, not lose ourselves to the cause, right? Where in trying to win the battle, we lose the war. And we lose the war of the mind and our peace. As long as we can keep, you know, doing what we do and all our temples and, you know, Dhamma schools and meditation programs and online things and drop, drop, we can fill up the jar, just like it says in the Dhammapada. So those are just some of my Uh, I think you you breaking off. So thank you so much. I, I think we it wasn't clear something was wrong with your uh, connection. I guess the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, so uh, okay. I think we have come to an end. Uh, I know uh, you have so much to share. Uh, very well, Trisha. Just uh, one minute. I can give you one minute since you raised your hand. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. 
All right. So last quote uh, leaving uh, this uh, group is that the Buddha said, you can win a thousand battle a thousand times. Huh. Uh, but the noblest victor of all is one who wins the battle with himself. That's right. So bring it all back uh, to yourself. Be an unshakable rock. Um, mm. Not to be moved by anything that is good and not to be moved by anything that is negative in the world. Yeah. I'd like to conclude my talk and may you all be well, be happy, be yeah. free. Thank you. You know, I know that that's the key message, right? Thank you for sharing that uh, teaching of the Buddha. So I'm very uh, grateful to all the venerable monks and nuns for making such a great contribution, adding your insights into today's discussion, uh, shedding the light and by bringing hopes through the teachings of the Buddha. And let us come together and and send out metta, loving kindness to all sentient beings. And I think, you know, uh, uh, Venerable uh, Nalaka, in your background, we see, you know, uh, there's a Sinhalese saying called, Seal Satya Dukin Midetva, may all sentient beings be free from suffering. I said, that's a, that's very uh, timely teaching. And uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing your, your, your wisdom and giving your blessings. So let us conclude today's discussion by reciting the Ova the Patimoka verses. Uh, I would like to respectfully invite uh, Bante Nanda. Can I invite Bante Nanda to <laughs> uh, recite the Ova the Patimoka verses today? Bante Nanda from Rhode Island. Bante, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, I'm not well, Bhante. I think I'm not well. I'm not well. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, how about Uparata Naika Hamadro? Bhante, you have to unmute, Bhante. Bhante Uparata, unmute yourself. Yeah. That's wonderful discussion about peace and Buddhist thought. Thank you very much, Bhante. All your contribute to your thought. We continue this thing, appreciate, and uh, wish you everybody happiness and peace. Namu tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas. Namu tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas. Namu tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas sab papas akaranang kusalas upasampada sachit pariyo dapanang Etam buddhan sasanang Kanti paramantapotitikha Nibbanam paramang vadanti buddha Nahi pabjito parupaghati Samanu ti parang vihet yanto Anupavadu anupagato Pati moke sangwaro Matanyuta che batasming Hanta che sayanasenang Adi chitte che ayogo etang buddhan sasenang. Thank you, Bhante Uparatana, for beautifully reciting those three verses. I, I think those three, these three verses have the solutions to modern conflicts, if you can understand, if you can practice them. So thank you, Bhante, for reciting uh, the verses beautifully. And also we have Bhante uh, Punna joining us from, <clears throat> from Sri Lanka in the last minute. Bhante Punna, uh, your wisdom could have been benefited so many people, but you came in the uh -huh. end. 
it is so precious bante this kind of discussion at this moment uh, yeah. for the whole world how strong the buddhist message for the war yeah. uh, and also to find the peace actually not in the uh, big uh, scale but in the subtle level going through your mind and finding a clear solution to purify your mind i think uh, perfect uh, type timing and i know bante you have done a great job uh, continuing this kind of uh, discussion uh, for this kind of uh, uh, subtle situation we mm. cannot directly criticize any part of the world mm. but we can find a solution this kind of uh, any any kind of conflict or whatever the thing uh, especially uh, going through our own mind so thank you so much bante yeah. you are beautiful uh, social work and i really appreciate this you oh, good thanks. help bante thank you, i really yeah, thank you so thank much you. bante no, it was, so I, i know you you have so much to share with us but you know uh, but next time you know next time okay bante thank I'm you so much grateful to our noble noble yeah our noble venerable venerables are here and so how strong their message to the world and it is it is amazing it is amazing sadhu 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 so we uh, please uh, uh, say, keep sending out metta to everyone like you know as we say dukkha patta chini dukkha bhaya patta chini bhaya soka patta chini soka hontu sabbe pipani no uh, those who are suffering may they become free from suffering those who are uh, living in fear and with fear may they become free from fears those who are grief stricken may they become free from grief may all sentient beings be well happy and peaceful so with these thoughts in mind let's say sadhu 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 so thank you and i I'm, i will see you all in two weeks time for our next uh, biweekly discussion until then all of you stay well and happy and may you have all the blessings of the buddha dhamma and the sangha so good night bye bye